All right, guys, welcome back. This is not a video about the original art of the Black Lotus. We'll have a separate video about that. But I want to go, uh, first off, break down each kind of Black Lotus, the Alpha Black Lotus, the Beta Black Lotus, the Unlimited Black Lotus, this Altered Unlimited Black Lotus by Eric Klug. Absolutely gorgeous, full altar. Collector's Edition and International Edition Black Lotuses. And I did miss out, uh, did not put... Uh, Artist proof uh, Black Lotus or an oversized one, but those two are part of the Black Lotus family. And we're going to talk about the kind of the color and everything, how it compares to the card, and just do some, you know, detail zooming in. And then I will, second part of the video, I will talk more about the financial aspect. Hope you guys enjoy the video. Thank you guys for watching. Enjoy. Vintage Magic. Game. Collect. Invest. For more information about our consulting and professional services, visit VintageMagic.com. Alright guys, welcome back. It's me, Daniel, with VintageMagic.com. And today, we're going to look at the uh, Black Lotus uh, and this is the original artwork. It sold for $4 million. I need to deliver it at the uh, Magic 30 show in Las Vegas. Beautiful artwork. Look at this detail. If you guys are interested in the video about the art, I'll have a video just dedicated towards that only. Uh, but I want to talk about the cards today of the Black Lotus. So... Immediately, you can take a look at this. You can tell that the artwork is so vivid. It's beautiful. The Alpha Edition here is absolutely gorgeous. Probably my favorite out of all of it. Um, the green is just not as saturated. Obviously, it's impossible to get that beautiful color exactly. Let's take a look at the Beta. Beta card here is uh, and maybe they corrected some of the colors for some of the cards, like uh, especially the borders um, of the card. They changed it up, like red, red elemental blast is a little different border, um, and a few other cards. There's a lot, of, obviously, a lot of errors to the beta cards, or sorry, the alpha cards. Alpha's still, gosh, just so gorgeous. I don't know. I'm just staring at this artwork. I know, it's it's distracting. Um, I'm going to talk later about the uh, financial landscape of it also. So uh, I just want to do like a little color comparison, stuff like that. Now, the Unlimited, I feel like it's exactly the same, but it's hard to really tell because of the fact that... Um, they are, it's a white border card. So it looks a little washed out in a way, but if you put them right next to each other, here's the alpha and the limited. It's pretty much the same. Yeah, pretty much the same. All right, this one is a little, What what is this? You guys are probably wondering, what the heck is this thing? This is an Eric Klug altar. Um, he's a, a very, very, very well-known altarist. And altars are basically, can either be the altar of just the image area, can stretch to the box, uh, etc. So, this one is the entire card. This is an unlimited card in pretty much mint condition. Look at this, really clean, or near mint to mint. And um, this is the uh, vintage, mat vintage Championship U.S by Steve Belladin. So this was created for the winner. Um, and uh, this was not given to the winner, but there's a painting for it. So Eric Klug did his interpretation pretty much identical of the original, other than the fact that he has a lotus here, but there's actually a lotus there also. So a little homage to Christopher Rush uh, and obviously Steve Belden, um, beautiful card, beautiful altar. All right, right here. 
And I'll do another color color check here. Look at that. Burn it up for you. Yeah, they're pretty much the same. Beautiful. All right, next is obviously the other two. Uh, obviously very controversial these days. The International Edition. Okay. It's exactly the same as the Collector's Edition, but it says International on the back. And they are square corner. These are mint condition pretty much. Signed on the card by Christopher Rush. Uh, he passed away, uh, I think 2016. Really great guy. Um, I had the honor to kind of work with him on different uh, deals and spent some time just talking to him and had some meals. Really great guy. All right, that's the International Edition. And then we have the Collector's Edition, which is pretty much identical uh, to the International. Check that out. Another nice mint condition card. Okay, and signed by Christopher Rush. Very cool. All right, so I'll put these all right here. And there's the lineup right there. This is the, um, really, the mugshot, <laughs> as they say. The mugshot of all of the Black Lotuses ever created. Um, and probably wondering what the heck this guy is. So we're going to do a little video later on, but... I'm working with the Rush family on creating something really special. Um, this is a Japanese um, clay. It's not plastic. So this is very flexible. So you can mold it under shape you want. Very, very, um, you know, movable. It's on a wire for each, each piece. And, um, yeah, it's made in Hawaii. Um, I have a home in Hawaii now. And this beautiful artist is going to, we're going to work with them on creating this uh, just awesome, like, I guess you can put it as uh, on your computer. It can be a um, pencil weight or paper weight, sorry, whatever you want. So I thought I'd just show it with the Black Lotus because it's really identical in many ways. It has got that perfect, uh, the, the seeds or the inner part is beautiful right there. And this is a, this is more of like a 3D model, right? This is more of a, uh, like a flat linear version. So it's nice to be able to see it from a 3D position. Actually, I think this is 2D. Yeah, 2D. Sorry. The, the artwork. And this is a prototype. Uh, we haven't decided exactly on the sizes. Uh, here's the kind of sizing. It's about the card. Card. It's not quite card. About a card and a half tall. But again, we're gonna have different sizes and possibly Christmas ornaments, other things. So um, keep your eye out for that. We'll do a video on that later on. All right, I'm gonna cut the video, and we're gonna talk about the financial uh, thoughts about the Black Lotus. And I hope you guys enjoy this part of the video. All right, guys, welcome back. So, yeah, let's talk about the Black Lotus uh, as a card. Not going to talk about the art today. Uh, I will have a video on that just exclusively talk about the art and my thoughts on magic art in general. But the Black Lotus obviously is the Charizard, the Michael Jordan, the Babe Ruth, the King, the Holy Grail of all of the magic cards. And a lot of people have argued that, well, it's not necessarily the most powerful card in magic. And it's not necessarily the most beautiful card in Magic, uh, but it is definitely the most iconic card in Magic the Gathering. So there are people that have no idea what Magic is, and they know what the Black Lotus is. It's it's just one of those things, like a household name, like uh, Michael Jordan, like uh, I don't know, like Alf. Who's Alf? I'm just kidding. You know, like Mario. Super Mario Brothers. You know Super Mario Brothers. You know Black Lotus. 
So financially, obviously, this video is going to be kind of boring for that side. I always feel the Black Lotus is an amazing investment. Uh, I'm going to talk about numbers here in a second. I forgot two Black Lotuses for you Black Lotus purists out there. There's an Artist Proof Edition Black Lotus that's like the International Collectors. And the back is blank. Post Malone paid $800,000 for a signed uh, one of 50. Uh, now, first off, there isn't 50 signed Artist Proof Black Lotuses. But it was graded and authenticated by Beckett. And... Um, there's actually more, uh, four more rare Black Lotuses than that for the artist proofs. There's uh, the ones that are painted on the back uh, by the original artist, Christopher Rush. He painted four uh, artist proofs uh, from the beta edition uh, artist proofs. And I actually sold my copy during the pandemic. I actually regret that because now I'll never get it back. I know that it's worth way more. But the sad part is I have a massive artist proof collection and I'd rather have it all together. So, uh, yeah, I, I'm happy for the owner. But uh, it just uh, was one of those things where I made some other decisions, investments, and stuff like that. But that is the rarest, most special is to have the artist proofs painted on the back. You can have them sketched uh, in marker or pencil uh, for the newer, uh, for the other uh, artist proofs because they were more matte. But the glossy back of the... Um, the beta editions, you can't really sketch them except with marker or paint. You can uh, paint them on the back. Uh, and obviously, there's the promo size. I think they're like, uh, I don't know, they're pretty big. So, uh, I don't know, help me out there. It's it's pretty big. They're like a promo you got in some of the magazines. They have like Shiv and Dragon, Chaos Orb, uh, Herlo Minotaur, stuff like that. They're like in the Duelist magazine, I believe. And that one is also a Black Lotus. So I'll mention that also. So I think I got all the Black Lotuses out of the way. Let's talk about values. A lot of people always ask me about values. So I'm just going to say this. Um, uh, the Alpha Black Lotus, the, the king of the king of all the cards, play condition, you're going to be paying at least $50,000 $50, minimum. Uh, could reach anywhere from eighty dollars to $90,000 LP-ish EX condition. And once you get like to near mint, Near Mint Plus, Near Mint to Mint, you'll be paying anywhere from ninety to one hundred and thirty, forty thousand dollars. Once you start getting to more of the graded level, uh, eight, 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 five level, and then nines, you'll be reaching from the one hundred fifty to two hundred plus thousand. And if you get a BGS nine five, uh, there for Alpha, if it's a basic, generally about four to five hundred thousand dollars these days. And um, a PSA 10, I think it sold for $511,000 on PWCC when they were around on eBay a while back. But um, it's probably worth a little bit more now. You know, Even though the economy is pretty crappy right now, this is the type of uh, investment that is recession-proof. It's everything-proof because it is the king of all cards. Now, I will get into some of the other lower-end Alpha Lotus, uh, the lower-end black, lower black Lotuses that are affected. All right, so let's talk about beta. Beta is, uh, you know, obviously the played ones uh, range anywhere from uh, 15, 20 ish, you know, range, you know, played to uh, uh, near mints so are 30 ish. And then you have mint ones going for 40 to 50 range. Now, the economy has changed that pricing a little bit, but I have to say, beta is definitely um, still relatively stable. And then the 9.5 betas. Uh, generally go for anywhere from 100 to um, you know quads and stuff and go close to 200 if it was really good condition. I sold a, P a BGS 10 uh, before for $400,000. Uh, that's That was overseas. And that card, I've graded three of the four ever graded. So I'm very familiar with that. I'm not going to talk about the grading and what to look for. I'm going to do separate videos on that later on. That's a full-on video. And I, I do plan on doing that, talking about what I look for for each older Magic card individually because they're very specific. Uh, but that's a different series, another time, another day. And uh, let's talk about the Unlimited. Unlimited is probably the one that has gone down quite a bit because of the economy. So um, Unlimited played 
for many, many years was only like a few thousand dollars. And then it spiked up, creeped up, and eventually got to almost over over $10,000 played, literally played. And because the betas went up and the alphas went up. So the unlimiteds creeped up. Now with the economy changing, I've seen a lower end copies go for $9,000 range. People need, people need the money, right? So I think it's uh, people are going to scoop those up pretty quick because – well, it is a Black Lotus, and uh, people love to play with that card. It's, it's like a, I don't know. It's like, I'm not saying it's like Bitcoin because it's better than Bitcoin. Um, it's just a currency that everybody in Magic always trades up to. They want to sell all their crappier cards, all their newer stuff, whatever they can do to get a Black Lotus, especially an Unlimited because it's entry level. All right, so once uh, the you know unlimited, you know the limited, the nicer ones, you know, generally are about fifteen to twenty thousand for nines, eights, you know, and then they can reach uh, anywhere from thirty-ish to forty thousand uh, dollars on the nine fives and higher quality ones. Now, with the economy, you know, the way it is, unlimiteds tend to be. The one that gets hits the, hits the hardest, but again, higher grade copies, not really affected because there's not very much out there. Uh, but eights, seven, eights, and nines, predominantly there's more of them, so you might see a decline if someone auctions it off really quickly on eBay or fire sales it on a Facebook group, etc. Um, the altar card that I have there, the Eric Klug, um, right there. Um, I, you know, this is a hard one to price. I'm not going to accept any offers on it unless it's an insane offer. Because Air Klug only does one altar. And that's it for a, a particular altar. So, uh, of that image. So, he will not do a Steve Belden uh, uh, Vintage uh, Championship Prize uh, full altar ever again. He won't do it. It doesn't matter. So, he's a very unique artist that way. He will not replicate, replicate over and over again. He... He just, I don't know if he finds a monotonous, something like that, but just won't do it. So that's a great, a great altar. I think I'm going to keep it for a while. Um, I wouldn't be surprised it's worth uh, 2X, uh, a high quality uh, uh, unlimited because uh, Eric Klug is definitely the gold standard of alterate, alterists other than uh, the original artist. But even then, his quality is insane. The, the card itself is so flat. The paint is so flat. There's no, uh, there's just no errors. It's almost like it's like printed on there. It's incredible. So awesome, awesome altruist. And then you have lastly the collector's edition, international editions. Those are those were rising. They were at about four to five thousand dollars mint, uh, pretty steady, but uh, especially international. But because of the economy, the way it is, and also the Magic 30 anniversary. Um, they've gone, you know, like four range to higher threes for higher quality. And I can see those going down more. And I'm just going to tell you right out of the gate. Those are generally the most entry level Black Lotus for old school Magic players. And when I say that is, you know, because, well, you know, most groups will allow you to play with, uh, especially Eternal Central rules. You can use CE and IE cards, ICE cards, and um, that's an affordable price point for uh you know that sounds ridiculous affordable thousands of dollars but it is right and so you've already seen a hit with all the other power nine the black lotus is not immune to that because it is a big card and people are speculating that the magic 30th anniversary cards are going to really affect the marketplace uh more right so uh we'll see you know i, I heard some rumors that people are selling their C and ice cards because they want to like buy into the uh the newer cards i don't know who knows right i mean go figure all right so in summary the black lotus just i hope this video helped a lot for you guys it's just a rundown of the variety of black lotuses out there um the artist proof black lotus is obviously so far rare and the Collectors International are more accessible. And now you have the Magic 30th Anniversary cards, which I'm guessing are going to be priced closer to the CE price. Um, maybe less. I mean, if the demand is not there uh, for the cards and people don't open the packs, um, 
you might see a, a drop in them quite a bit. Maybe maybe half of the sea ice cards, in fact, you know, at their peak. Because I see that seeing ice cards going back up because those are 1994 production cards, 93, 94 production cards, and that's vintage, more old school cards. Half the gold back, you know, just similar to the uh, 30th anniversary, but square corner, but still way more. Uh, I would say more I iconic, just because of the fact that it was around at a earlier time. All right, guys. Well, thanks for watching the video. I hope hope you guys learned something in the video. Uh, sorry, it's a long winded video. I want to give you guys as much detail as possible. Um, but if there are any questions, please put in the comment below. Always happy to go over any questions and uh, always happy to hear your thoughts. All right, guys, take care. Happy collecting and investing and be safe out there uh, in the marketplace. It's a little wild. Don't buy deals uh, just because it's gone down. Really analyze what's happening in the marketplace before you go after it. Take care. Hey everyone, it's me, Daniel, with VintageMagic.com. I want to share with you more about how we handle consignments. So to begin the consignment process, we actually need to start with the consultation service. In this consultation, I will determine what you're looking to do. And generally, consigners usually tell me, hey, Dan, I'm looking to sell my items and maximize the value of their collection. After we determine through the consultation, I usually like to do an appraisal process. And an appraisal process in terms of a consignment is more fitted towards authenticity and valuation for current market values. From there, after a contract is crafted and signed, we will then receive the items from you. The reason why our consignment process is very thorough is we also identify cards that could be graded so then they can maximize higher dollar values. So the payment process is very simple. Once we have sold your items, you'll get an updated ledger and we will process payment um, for whatever form of payment you need. As a consigner, you're gonna experience our white glove service. What that means is I'm gonna personally handle your collectibles from beginning to end. And rest assured, the client that purchases your collectibles will also receive the same white glove service. It's a signature service that I really pride myself on in working closely with my clients. Vintage Magic. Game. Collect. Invest. For more information about our consulting and professional services, visit VintageMagic.com.